Hey Sparklers, my name is Beth Shadler. It is my week and I like to do things techie sometimes. Um, we're super excited to have Evelyn Clifford here with us. First of all, we are there. Welcome, Evelyn. Um, we are the She Sparks Society. If it's your first time joining us, then let me just tell you a little bit about what we do. We create community nationwide, really. I mean, we started in Western North Carolina, but we've expanded all over the U.S. and and hopefully globally one of these days. And we support women in real estate. And what we could be is really competitive and we are choosing a different path. We are choosing collaboration and support and education and camaraderie. And uh, that's what we're up to. So um, once a week we do uh, an interview with someone that knows more than us. And this is the week that we are doing AI. And so Evelyn Clifford comes from a background with a team that really has a vested interest in AI. And so she's the person that I go to. Not only is she on my Living in Asheville team, yeah. but she is the person that I go to whenever I have AI questions. She's been on quite a few panels. She's been in real estate for 45 years. How many? 14? <laughs> How many years? Yeah, just like, like 10. Like 10 years in real estate from Chicago, been in Asheville for a little bit too. Um, she's pretty much a genius when it comes to a lot of things and my advice <laughs> giver often. And she knows she, she is really kind of a forefronter when it comes to AI. So I wanted to pick her brain today and see some different ways that we can start to use AI in our real estate business mm -hmm. to leverage ourselves and to regain a little bit more of our independence when it comes to time while keeping the standards of good service in place. Um, and that's something that you, I've, I've really learned a lot from you with. Um, and how, so how to tell us a little bit about how you kind of got into um, learning about AI it, yeah. and, and how it even came on your radar because you really right. are a forefront, you know, a, adventurer in this arena. Thanks. Yeah. So um, thanks for having me today. You're welcome. Thank you. <laughs> Happy to be here. Love being part of She Sparks and love all the great information you guys provide for everybody. Uh, and happy to be a support for anybody I can. So it started um, last year when I was with Dylan, who I've I've been on these panels with, and we work together as a team. And Dylan is definitely he's an analytical brain. He's all about statistics and things like that. And so he was really telling me about chat GPT and getting into it. And, and so I, I was just following after him. I was just right beside him, right? He would talk about it every day and, and I would get onto his Facebook group. So he has, if you have not already heard of it, it's called AI mastermind for real estate agents, the Facebook group, highly, highly recommend that you join. It is a private group and Dylan is the one who'll, who'll accept you. So definitely let him know who you are and that, and where you're from. Uh, it's great. It's a great group to kind of creep on if you just, because that's what I did in the beginning. I was like, all right, I'm just, I was going to be a creeper. I'm just going to creep on this group, see what it's all about. I am not techie at all, but I am all about efficiency. I'm all about efficiency. And so I was kind of watching this Facebook group. I was watching the videos. Sometimes he posts chat GPT for beginners, chat GPT for intermediate. And he has these groups that you can show up and zoom on about certain things. So I was really learning from him. And then I just started naturally bringing it into my daily life. So I use chat GPT daily for sure. And um, one of the things I would encourage for anybody watching that doesn't quite use chat GPT or doesn't know how is just to start. Instead of going to Google, Instead of asking Alexa, start using ChatGPT. Use this as your go-to for questions. Um, I was using it in the beginning just for random things. Like, um, so I have a I have a morning routine that I think I mentioned to you one time. Um, 
I wake up about a half an hour before my boys do with my husband and we get coffee and we read like a morning motivation or devotional, something to just to meditate and be quiet. On. Well, we ran out, the book ran out that we were doing. So I just went on chat GPT and I said, all right, give me a five minute morning motivation. You can say that and see what pops up, but I was more specific. So I said, in the tone of Joel Osteen, in the tone of Oprah, in the tone of Gabby Bernstein. And sure enough, it gave me a five minute motivation. And the more specific you get with it, the better it is. I think I also said, give me uh, an affirmation for the day. You know, give me something to meditate on. And boom, it provided it like that. So those are just little ways um, I started using it. When I needed something, I tried to think, oh, wait, how can AI help me with this? Rather than how am I going to schedule X, Y, and Z? I put that in chat GPT and chat GPT schedules it for me. So I really tried to start thinking of it as my um, personal assistant. And I have to tell you, I've always dreamed of having a personal assistant. Like it's, it's a dream, a, a fantasy is to have a personal assistant. And so this is starting to be it. Let me ask you one thing. You just said you put it into chat GBT and it schedules it for you. What do you mean with that? Yeah, if I have um, kind of my, if I have tasks for the day, I can upload them, you know, write them in and say, which is the best order for me to do this? Which I'm, when once again, what is the most efficient way for me to handle this. And, and that's one reason why I love ChatGPT is using it for e communication, emails, um, text messages. I really like it for communication. I feel it's much more efficient than I can be with all my various distractions. Yeah. And with so much going on in our heads these days mm -hmm. and, um, you know, we're being pulled so many different directions. It seems like Chad GBT is kind of like a friend who's grounded and centered who you can bounce ideas off of. Yeah. I mean, that it, it, that's Beth. That's exactly what I encourage you to start using it as. And because the more you get to know chat, the more it'll get to know you. And now my nose that I prefer the tone of Oprah and Gabby Bernstein and Joel Osteen. And so even without asking chat to respond in that way, it naturally gravitates towards that tone in the response because it's gotten familiar with me. That makes sense. Yeah, that makes sense. So yeah. I had a client the other day email me and she said she asked chat, you know, she said, I'm really into nature. I want to be close to it. I want to be in a city, but not like a really big city. I want to feel safe from climate things. Where should I live? Like she did what she sent me the chat that she put in there mm -hmm. and it said Asheville. And then she contacted me. Huh, awesome. Isn't that funny? <laughs> I mean, yeah. people are using it like that now. Yeah. I mean, it's you great. can you can put in your personal preferences and mm -hmm. ask advice. Wouldn't it be nice to order a man that way? That's what I was just thinking <laughs> that. I was like, I want someone who's <laughs> responsible, financially yeah. secure. Yeah. Do you know him? Oh, yes. Greg yeah. Yeah. White down the road at 47 Birch Street. That would yeah. be awesome. It, well, you bring up a good point. You said her prompt was pretty long in, in her conversation. So that's it. it. In the beginning, I thought I'm just going to do a quick prompt. You know, I'm just going to do a quick snippet. But what I've found is if you really want a good quality answer is it is all about the prompt and being as descriptive of, as possible and elaborating and even asking chat hey, ask me what I look for in my lifestyle. Ask me about my lifestyle needs in order to find where maybe the best house might be. Okay, I never thought about it like that. So mm -hmm. you can ask it to get to know you. Yes, yes. So let's let's talk about business real quick. 
Okay. Because I had an agent the other day, <clears throat> brand new, asking me, you know, I'm a new agent. What would you recommend? And ChatGPT can be a, your real estate coach. It can be your business coach. You can say, hey, I'm a new agent. This is where I live. This is my goal. Um, tell Chad about your person. This is my personality type. This is what I'm good at. This is what I'm not good at. Ask me more questions about my business. Ask me questions about the business I want to do. Ask me questions about my goals. So then you can tell me the best way to go about that. That is absolutely amazing. Yeah. And it's a conversation. It's not a five minute thing. So it's worth having these conversations and you can talk into chat if you have the voice option and that flows a little bit more than the typing I find. So that's an app that you can put on your phone. No, and it's no, it's part of chat. So I have chat GPT four, which is a yeah. paid version. I think both have the voice option now. Um, in the beginning, only chat GPT four had the voice option, but then it'll also talk back. So let's say you're in the car, which most of us are. And I know Julie is right now. <laughs> You can have a conversation with Chad and um, I, I think it would get to the root of the objective of that conversation a little bit better than just quickly typing, quickly getting an answer, but actually spending time talking to Chad, but also asking and prompting Chad to talk to you back and ask you questions and get to know you better. I love that. Um, it's just so interesting because I haven't thought to use it like that. Like mm -hmm. I'm just getting going with like Alexa. I'm not even doing Alexa. I, I don't even know the capabilities, but I mean, Alexa was our first kind of AI, right? Yeah. Yeah. Right. Okay. And there's so many different, you know, chat, you know, one thing that you do that I think is so cool on chat is that you write or you request through mm -hmm. prompts um, emails or responses to be written in a certain disc personality. Yeah, that's really what I, it brings me so much ease and it takes writer's block out of it and it gives me confidence. So this is one thing that I just kind of picked up on. So for many of you, if you learn a personality assessment, if you know yours, if you can kind of use that tool to assess your clients, I learned the disc personality assessment um, so I, I'm a high D I know Beth is a high I, right. And so let's say I'm writing a text to Beth about maybe something a little bit uncomfortable. I would write. So what I would do is I would write the text, whatever I want to say, and then I would put it in chat GPT and say, Hey, can you please edit this for a personality of a high I and so it'll rewrite it. And it says the same thing. It says the bulk of what I wanted to say. It still sounds like me, but in a way that you would relate better because that's your personality type. Doesn't yeah. It? So that I would hear it. Easier. Yeah. Like yeah. lovely. It, it would resonate better with you. And so I do that a lot with clients, um, with inspection, <laughs> all the inspection items going back and forth. Um, well, that's an interesting topic that you were yeah. talking about the other day is that you can actually plug in PDFs and inspection reports and say, give me the highlights that mm -hmm. I need to address. Yeah. And it can put together a summary. Is that right? Yeah. Yeah. And it just, I mean, we go through these, this is our personal touch too. We still need to read these inspection reports, but it really takes out, um, well, let me say it just, it really affirms and confirms what I think, you know? to be right in alignment with, with what this computer thinks. So it gives me the confidence moving forward. And then I've, so here is how I did one recently is I didn't upload the inspection report because we, we knew what was going on. I sent out an email saying, Hey, these are some pretty hefty. There, there are some pretty hefty things that came up and, um, and they responded. And actually it was, it, yeah. And they responded. <laughs> I'm going to try to not say too much. Um, so we needed to respond. 
So we wrote out what we wanted to respond. My client wrote out what she wanted to respond. I asked ChatGPT to rewrite it in the similar tone of the email that was given to us. So I put in the email that we received from really the seller and the seller's agent. We had it edited in a way that that seller would receive it in the same tone. And sure enough, they received it. Their response was, we agree with everything you say. Here you go. <laughs> wow. And I think because it was written in a way that resonated with him. Yeah. I really did. I really, it all comes back. It all comes back to communication, right? Exactly. And that is a superpower. No. It's communication is a superpower to be able to be heard as you intend. Mm -hmm. I mean, it's not like you're just winging it. Like you're just throwing words out there without reviewing it, or it's not something mm -hmm. that you actually mean. Right. Um, I find that really empowering. Yeah. And you know, ah, uh, what you said about the new agents is just awesome because on our Monday motivation, what day is it? It's Tuesday, yesterday motivation call, you know, one of the things that I spoke about was finding your thing, knowing what you're doing, which is mm -hmm. just like life in general, but then finding your thing. And that's something that AI can really help you with yes. with what you spoke with earlier about here's what I enjoy, here are the qualities mm -hmm. that I possess that that seem to work well for me and things like that. Mm -hmm. One thing that I'm really interested too is, you know, how we can use all the different programs um, for overcoming hurdles that we're not necessarily comfortable doing. Like, I know there's a lot of people who like know they should be doing some short form social media or they should be, mm -hmm. you know, I don't know, all kinds of things. And there's so many different programs that can help you do that. You know, yeah. we see, we see realtors right now. You can always tell if it's an AI generated uh, uh, description for a home, like a listing yeah. right now, because they're not paying attention. They're using yeah. words that are like immaculate or yeah. stunt, you know, like, I don't know what the words are. There's some words that are repetitive and it's probably mm. because of the version, I guess, that they're using and they're not mm -hmm. kind of paying attention to yeah. it. But, yeah, um, we, we still funny. need us in there. You know, it still needs to have, us as part of this as we're learning and and I think a year from now it's going to be totally different you know so right now please start using chat don't be afraid of it uh get familiar with what it can do for you let it get familiar with who you are and I would encourage everyone in the family to have their own so that it's not this hodgepodge of of personalities um because I think a year from now it's going to be so far along. And for those of us that are trying to keep up, it's going to be noticeable. Absolutely. And it's probably really freaky for realtors who do not embrace technology. Mm -hmm. yeah. um, because if you don't jump on board, mm -hmm. then you're going to be left behind. You're going to yeah. see like you're not really with it. You can get, you can nerd out as much as you want on this. I mean, I, I did for a little bit, but it was very time consuming. You know, you go down a rabbit hole of creating these videos with AI and all of a sudden you spent one hour on Dolly creating a picture for who knows what, you know? And so it's very easy. So I, um, once again, very much all about efficiency. Like, how can this help me? How can I use it? And I pretty much hone in to some very specific ways um, it can help me. I do, something that came to mind when I did go down, down the rabbit hole with Dolly is I was preparing for an open house. So I asked Dolly to create a coloring page for an eight-year-old of a house in the mountains with 123 Main Street as the address. And I specifically gave it details about this house. And it, it created you know, a coloring page for any kids that came to the open house of this house. And it looked like the house. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Uh, yeah, give or take, give or take, give yeah. or take. Yeah, but, but I, even, thought, I thought that was clever. I thought it was clever. I think it's super smart. I think it's wonderful. And I mean, there's a lot of programs that we already use right now that have now incorporated AI into their infrastructure, like Canva. Yeah. Which I have not. I mean, we all use Canva pretty much, mm -hmm. right? Unless we have a graphic designer on our team. 
Um, and now, so with Canva, they now can take like visuals and social media posts and kind of alter them and enrich them. Mm -hmm. I've even seen like where they can add curtains that are flowing and make it kind of like 3d and yeah. or 4d or whatever that is. And, mm -hmm. um, and then like on zoom too, I mean, you can be in five meetings at one time and you just have your AI bot like taking notes for you. Yeah. I remember Robin Mann one time was like, you're in every meeting that I'm in. And I'm like, I am. And I like had the Zoom <laughs> set it, setting set up and I was like, I didn't even know that. Sorry. Yeah. That's probably creepy. Yeah. Um, I you don't can want to be that busy. I don't. Well, who, I'm not going to do all that. I don't want to have to be in five places at once. No, I mean, but there is wonderful yeah. things. Like yeah. if you're having a meeting with a client, yeah. especially on Zoom, mm -hmm. to have a summary created for you afterwards mm -hmm. so that you can really give them your full attention and not be trying to take all the notes during that meeting is yeah. invaluable. Oh yeah, I mean, and, and they really feel heard. They really they feel, feel heard. Opinion. And you can okay. send it to them afterwards right. Right. and say, right. here's what I gathered from the meeting. Let me know if anything changed, you know. Yeah. Yeah, I do want to come back to Canva for a minute because I just want to sure. specify that that's Canva Magic Studios. That's part of your what you pay for in your subscription. Um, once again, I think there's like 10, 8, 10 different things in the Magic Studios that it can cross post from like creating a reel to creating a regular post to creating, you know, content for a video. So that's another rabbit hole that you can go down. And I do know that Canva has created their own YouTube videos of each of those different Magic Studio um, options. And that's very easy. So once again, I would go back, I, I go to YouTube and YouTube, Magic Studios, how to use, you know, these different formats. And that that's the easiest. I find that's the easiest way to learn. I need to be shown. Yeah, I do too. And so you were talking about Dolly earlier, but I'm not sure what that is. Oh, Dolly is, um, it's part of ChatGPT. It's, it can create the pictures. It creates pictures. So if you want to, if you want a picture of the Blue Ridge Mountains with um, a, you know, a mountain house, it can create that. You can post it on Instagram if you want, but um, I don't know if I would do that right now, but uh, you could create, you know, some, some fun and interesting things. And that's how I created the coloring book page. See, once again, it's like, okay, I can go down this rabbit hole, but why? Why do I need this in my life? So for me, it was for my business and I created coloring pages. Do I need Dolly to create images? for clients no you know or, or maybe maybe you do I don't know I'd be interested if anybody uses that but this is one you asked me how I got into um AI and my brother is a um he's a creative director at a huge marketing firm so we've been always talking about you know AI and how he uses it and actually he doesn't use a lot of his storyboard creators anymore because of things like Dolly and whatnot. Well, and that that's a great segue too, because I'm curious as it, you know, for your, from your perspective, what are some of the downfalls of this? Yeah. I mean, I think some jobs will go away, but some jobs will be created. Um, one thing that might relate to many of us is a social media manager. You know, those didn't exist for a while. And then all of a sudden people were getting degrees in social media media manager, which I had no idea you could get a degree in, that might fall to the wayside because it is so much easier for us to do, um, to manage our social media using AI in these different tools like Canva Magic Studios, um, just simply asking ChatGPT to do a prompt for a certain picture that we can post on Instagram. Um, you can have ChatGPT create a monthly content calendar for your Instagram. Um, that's something that I've done and I I found helpful. Um, happy to go into that a little bit more if you think it might be relevant. But. I think people would care about that. Yes. If you could okay. kind of walk us through that, that would be awesome. All right. So hopefully ChatGPT knows who you are. If not, tell it. Tell it who you are, what you're doing, where you live, um, all the things. 
And then, then it'll know you're a realtor in Asheville, North Carolina. So then you can say, okay, help me create a monthly, con a one month content calendar for March. And the key thing is getting as specific as possible. So you ask to put it in table format. That's a key thing. Because then you're going to take this table format, you're going to copy and paste and put it in a spreadsheet. And that's how you're going to access it every day. So you're asking ChatGPT to create a one month content calendar for your social media posts, including a, um, let's see, uh, content for your posts, like copy and hashtags and what data post and maybe a description of a picture or a video to post with it. And say, uh, you know, say you want to post something three times a week. Uh, once a week, you want a, to create a reel and boom, 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 boom. All of a sudden you have a post for March 1st, March 3rd, March 5th, on March 7th, you're creating a reel. And it takes all the writer's block out of what am I going to do? Because then it says March 1st, here's your post towards new home buyers entering the spring market. And I'll give you the copy. It'll give you the hashtags and it'll give you an idea for a picture that you can use Dolly for, or I try to find pictures on my phone that might be comparable or um, to go to Canva Magic Studio and create a picture there. And that's when Canva Magic Studio can come into play to help with the reels, to help with creating the post. Wow. Get that. So, so then you just, you open up your computer, you open up your spreadsheet, you're going to copy and paste that table format into a spreadsheet. You open up the spreadsheet every day or whenever, boom, there it is. And then you post and you're done in five minutes. That's amazing. Yeah. So how many people procrastinate? doing that because they don't know what to do and they don't want to hire a content manager. They don't know how to schedule out their posts. This is like me, me, me. I remember when I was doing short form content, I was kind of naive and I was like, I'm just going to do just whatever I want to do, you know? And when I did it myself, it worked because it was really authentic. When I hired someone, it was like, it's Taco Tuesday, you know, but this kind of seems like you still have you in it. Yeah, it, you can move the post if it doesn't fit, if it's St. Patrick's Day and there's yeah. something else that talks about, you know, whatever. I mean, that's where the human component still needs to be in there and, and edit, you know, please don't just copy and paste, copy, paste and edit. Yeah. That's it's quite amazing. Actually, this is one time. Oh my gosh. So I did copy and paste. It was in the beginning, copy and pasted. Um, and then later I, I looked at the email that I sent out and it said, this is for a high D personality oh. type. <laughs> and that, and, and then it said, and then it said, dear Mr. and Mrs. Smith, blah, blah, blah. And I was like, oh my gosh. Well, maybe they don't know the DISC personality test, so you're probably... Yeah, they didn't say anything, but uh, <laughs> lesson, lesson learned, lesson learned. Oh, I really love that. Um, okay, any other programs that you use that are that you could share to kind of encourage people to leverage themselves out and mm -hmm. or find their find their calling of what their thing is or... Yeah, you know, I mean, that's... Figure out what they're supposed to do every day. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah. So try to use it every day. Think, I mean, even so much as is we've used it for dinner, like, all right, chat GPT, we have chicken, green beans, and potatoes. Give me three recipes of how to use this tonight for dinner. And, it'll, you know, whatever. But the point is, is to use it, whether it's for real estate or not, you just get familiar with it. Um, another way I'd encourage you is to really have a conversation with ChatGPT and maybe have ChatGPT be your business coach. Say, hey, ChatGPT, um, I want you to act as my real estate business coach and find real estate business coaches that you admire, that you aspire to be, that you respect because chat is, you know, brokerage ag agnostic. So chat has all these books and all these manuals from 
Keller Williams and EXP and um, Premier Sotheby's. And, you know, it has all this information and this knowledge that we can tap into. So why not tap into the real estate experts of, of the world and have chat act as them to give you advice? I think it's awesome. It is awesome. And I think it's kind of the, the where we're going. Yeah. We're going to sound archaic if we're, yeah. if we're kind of not participating in this. Yeah. Well, well, that's the thing. I mean, that comes back to our business. And instead of paying thousands of dollars for a business coach, um, which I think is a great idea. I'm, you know, I think it's a great idea to hold it accountable. Um, but if, if you're accountable to yourself, if you don't need the accountability, if you're self-sufficient, you're independent and you're type A and you're like, ah, then chat GPT can work for you in being your business coach. Will you tell me how I can just like take my phone and start having a conversation with chat? Will you like walk me through it? Yeah. It's, do you have the app? You have I, the app? You, yeah. Cause Dylan set it up on my phone, but I want to like, just have like heart to heart, a heart to heart with chat and be like, <laughs> okay, listen, here's the deal. Here's yeah. what I do. Here's how I make my money. Most of my clients are like this. I am into this. Here's yeah. my specialty. Which yeah. app am I looking for? Yeah. It's just chat GPT. That's all. Really? This is not complicated. No, but now mine is going. It's not called AI chat. Crazy. Stop, stop, stop. Okay. It's mine's called... listening to you and our oh. conversation. Yikes. Okay. Stop talking. Mine's going crazy right now. Okay. So I mean, you just go into it and then you go on message and you, you push your little microphone. You just start talking. Okay. See, it says, ask me anything. It's going crazy right now. Okay. I'm doing an interview with an expert on AI. What are some questions that I should ask her? Okay. This is going crazy. Okay, here we go. Let's start this thing over. Oh, jeez. <laughs> okay. Okay. What are some ethical considerations? What can business organizations leverage? You know, yada, yada. So these are kind of things we, I'm, I already- I don't want to talk about ethics. I already, yeah, I already, I already like asked these questions. You know what I do though? Like, because I make YouTube videos and I do a lot of interviews. Oh, you do? Oh, I do. <laughs> and, um- I, well, what I can do for my YouTube videos, which is really awesome is I will type in there like, Hey, I'm making a video about this area. Um, create a, a bulleted kind of timeline and, uh, map. What would it be called? Screenplay mm -hmm. kind of, of how this will work. And it will be like, okay, opening scene, you're going to be walking up, you know, and all this yeah. stuff. I'm like, Oh, wow. That's really cool. I hadn't thought about that. It also helps like if you're making videos with, for me, like with hooks and titles and thumbnails, mm -hmm. which are really important mm -hmm. um, and interview questions, of course, um, there's just so much that it helps with and, and, uh, you know, neighborhoods. So here, so again, like going back to that client, like say you have a client who's like, okay, I'm really into horses, you know, but I have to be near the whole food. You know, I don't know, whatever. We right. use our expertise, but we're not going to know everything all the time. Right. Like we're not going to have the answers all the time. And it's a right. great fallback. And, and our brains get tired. I don't know about you, but I, we were just talking how we wake up and we're like, no. Yeah. And then right around three o'clock, my brain's like, oh my God, stop. Like, just take a break. Um, so what I find is it takes a lot of the thinking out of it. I feel like I'm doing more editing than thinking, if that makes sense sometimes. Um, and so that'll help conserve our energy. I mean, that's why Steve Jobs wore the same thing every day, a black t-shirt and jeans, because that's one less thing he had to think about. And so I think the more we can utilize this tool to think for us, but, but really to think with us, um, it will conserve our energy, 
provide it provides me with more confidence. It takes out writer's block, um, and it makes my time thinking, planning, strategizing much more efficient. Yeah, and so here's some of the things that the you know when you did that panel mm -hmm. um, with Dylan some of the things that they were talking about that AI can do is scripts and role play, business planning, mm -hmm. marketing, collateral, mm -hmm. brainstorming partner. It's kind of like a teammate. Yeah. You know, um, copywriting, image creation, expert advice on any topic. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Like that's mind blowing. Mm -hmm. Yeah. It's um, really nice because instead of Googling, I mean, let's take it outside of real estate for a minute, but if you're, um, Oh, let's say, no, this is better. We'll bring it back to real estate. Let's say you're in this house and there's like this weird picture of something. It's corroding. It looks rusty. It looks really old, but you're like, I don't know what this is. You take a picture of it in chat GPT. You take a picture and you say, what is this? And it will quickly tell you what it is. Now, before that, we would have, gone on Google, what is this thing that looks like this, blah, 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 sorted through all these pictures, sorted through all these comments, and this makes it so easy. So definitely incorporate, don't forget, ChatGPT is in your pocket when you're out on showings, and if anybody has a question, there's no reason they should leave without it answered. Wow. So what does that do to Reddit? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> what does that do to Reddit? Yeah. Um, it's so interesting because I'm realizing, wow, I'm not using this like I should be. Yeah. And one more thing before that has popped into my brain um, that I used it for this week as an example is we have a client that is open to HOAs, but wants to be able to have chickens. So I throw in the HOA. So what I do when I see a home, she's interested in the home, but wants to learn more about the HOA docs. I put the, I upload, I download, I go to the MLS. Here, let's start from the beginning. Go to the MLS, go into attachments, download the HOA rules and regulations. And then I upload them to ChatGPT. And I say, based on the attached document, can we have chickens on this property and then what happens i mean it'll tell you yes or no and, and it will well it won't just say yes or no it will um it it will give you the part of that document that answers your question so it'll say based on this paragraph we yeah here's the a paragraph conclusion that is that you can or cannot have right. poultry Right. And, and it's like that rather than scrolling through, figuring it out, maybe you're multitasking, you know. Okay. I have a question for you because I have a virtual assistant. And so, you know, one of the things on there is that, that AI can replace a lot of those tasks that a virtual assistant can do, but what would that look like to train your virtual assistant to be able to use the AI as you would? Because if it's mm -hmm. to your voice, mm -hmm. you're the one that kind of has to train it. Well, so yeah, so the, so that's a little tricky. So I think what you would do is have maybe a chat GPT linked to a certain email, right? So maybe they could have, I don't know, I don't know this component, but I think he can't just have one chat GPT. It would have to be accessed to different ones, maybe with different email addresses. I'm not sure. But I mean, what it would do for you is you would put in under settings in ChatGPT, under settings, under your name, you can put in, let me see if I can tell you specifically what it is, custom instructions. Under custom instructions, it says, what would you like ChatGPT to know about you to provide better response? And that's when you could train your, your VA I am Beth Shadler. I work in Asheville, North Carolina. I am a female, you know, just kind of who you are, just pretty basic. And so then, but he would only be able to use the, or the VA would only be able to use this chat GPT acting as you, because that is the custom instructions. Now you can turn it on and off with this toggle. Okay. So 
maybe they could use chat GPT, just, you know, normal use it. But if they use it on your behalf for you, they would have to turn that on. Yes. Well, that's really cool that there's an option to do that because sometimes I would love for them to be able to answer my emails as me. Yeah. And then sometimes I would be love for them to be able to answer their emails as them, but with a tone that yes. is in line with how I would answer it. Yeah. And that's what it says. How would you like chat GPT to respond? That's the second part of these custom instructions under your settings. Got it. And so that's who you could be, whoever you want to be, and tell it to answer and respond how you want it to. I'm going to see if anybody um, who's watching live has any uh, any questions for you before I just keep picking your brain. Um, because there's, it, it, there's just so much depth to it. But I also feel like I don't know enough to... Um, right. I'm trying to keep it simple right now because you could really go down the rabbit hole of different avenues, but I really want to encourage people to really think about what am I trying to achieve? How could this help me? How do I want to free up my brain space? Who do I wish I could talk to right now about this? Who do I wish I could bounce this off of? Well, this is your person. This is it. Could they... <laughs> So like if your husband is not so interested in your business, you could be like, so, you know, like you could just have a whole conversation with chat GBT. I love it. Yeah. That's so fun. Yeah. And then I also put a link to Dylan's uh, Facebook group mm -hmm. down there right mm -hmm. underneath. Um, so you all can join that. Mm -hmm. He has lots of seminars mm -hmm. all the time. Yeah. Weekly, weekly. weekly. And, and this is, this is how I learned, you know, so I, I joined when there was like, I don't know, 15 people. Now there's 10,000 people. Yeah. So feel free to just creep on there, scroll around, you know, see what people are doing, how, and you'll quickly learn how people are using it. And it will, it will, you know, inspire, I think it will inspire you. And then they have these videos. So for instance, the one about using Canva for social media, it, it's hard for me to tell you right now, this is a lot of information, but there's a video of Dylan and I doing it together. Yeah. I'll link that down below as well. Mm -hmm. I'll look on there and, and try to find that. The videos are, are really, um, they're great. Yeah. It's so interesting how it blurs the line between virtual reality and like mm -hmm. actual reality and it enhances mm -hmm. us mm -hmm. and yeah. the opportunity to enhance our business is like tenfold. Yeah. I really hope that I would love to have chat GPT in like a robot form like for real. So it's like here in my office and I'm saying, go file this here, go file this there, send out this envelope, you know, yada, yada. I, I see that in the future for sure. I mean, it's going to be like the Jetsons, right? That, that's where we're headed. So it's like, yeah. So we're not going to have to have kids anymore to get the remote. <laughs> <laughs> we'll just get to sit and like have conversations and relate to our children yeah. and like eye gaze. Yeah. Yeah. Should well, that, that's the thing. I don't want this to impede on my life where I go down these rabbit holes and then I forget what I'm doing. I mean, there's, there's so much you can learn. So I, I do pretty good at time blocking. So I just try to keep it time blocked for me, but just to really see how you can use this to be efficient in your life, but not take it over. Because like you said, yeah, you could be in five Zoom meetings, but what's the point of that? I mean, do we really want to be that busy? Now I'm going down a whole tangent. I don't want to be that busy where I need to be in five, you know. Well, I see it differently. Like months. if you're in five meetings, but you're not in five meetings and you just receive the summary afterwards and you don't have all like the, the little chit chat part. I like chit chat. You like the connection. Yes. Yes. Okay. Yes. Okay. And see, that's, you know, so for some people, I think, um, you know, people are going to use it, use it differently. So I'm going to do a human summary of what we've talked about. <laughs> and actually, so it's chat GPT has, is the most talked about obviously. And it's a great like starter drug into AI. Um, 
And um, also, if you think about how you can do the Canva magic, whatever that's called. Magic Studio. Magic mm -hmm. Studio. Captions AI for short form uh short form video content like reels and tiktoks is absolutely amazing mm -hmm. i use loom all the time there's a free mm -hmm. version and there's a paid version but if you're going to do it one time do it just go ahead and film it you got a screenshot you got your little face right there and put it in your google drive as a link and it will save you so much time especially if you're training and saying something over and over um, you were talking about Dolly for images, which is awesome. And then we have the the Zoom um, summaries that are available now, and you can be in different meetings at different times. I mean, that's a pretty dang good start right there. And some of those things we're yeah. already using. We just kind of have to like yeah. up our game a little bit. Yeah. Um, like I said, I'm going to link uh, Dylan's. I already did link Dylan's Facebook group down mm -hmm. below. I'm also going to link your interview if it's possible to do that down below. And then if you all think of questions later on that you want to ask, then post yeah. it in the comments down below. And I'm sure Evelyn would be glad to uh, chime in and, and share what she can. And thank you so much uh, for spending time with us because I'm kind of inspired right now. I think I'm going to take the evening. Yeah. Hey, chat, can you do my taxes for me? Yeah. Yes. <laughs> I, well, I think, I think so. You know, really? I mean, why not? If you gave them know. spreadsheets and I mean, can it make a fun. spreadsheet? Yeah. If you say it in a table format, you know, table format or maybe a spreadsheet. Yeah. I mean, there's a, there's a lot of things I still want to do like, with investments and um, things that, like, I kind of want to ask. I haven't gone down this rabbit hole, but my next thing is, is this a better deal than this? Should I put my yeah. money here? Here's all my money. What do I do with it? Financial advice. Yeah. Yeah. Why not? I don't know. I don't know. I'm just saying. We can cool. just be anywhere in the world, just living out our dreams now, doing whatever we want to do. Yeah. Just telling AI to answer all these questions and write all these emails. I love it. Okay. You rock. Thank you so much for spending time with us. And, um, yeah. So follow El Evelyn Clifford. She's all over the place. What's your Instagram? Uh, at Evelyn's Asheville. Evelyn's Asheville. I yep. love it. Yes. Okay. And I'm Beth Shadler and we are the She Spark Society based out of Asheville, North Carolina, but we are all over the place oh. until then. Uh, yeah, we'll see you soon. Bye, sparklers.